Good morning, everyone. It's Miss Chris from the Field Centers. Today, I'd like to introduce you to some of the aliens that live here at Finlayson and on, in Ontario. You heard me right. I said aliens. The aliens that we have living here are not from outer space. They're from other places in the world. They are plants or animals that have been brought here, usually by mistake, sometimes on purpose. Alien species of plants and animals can become invasive, which means that they can crowd out and take over areas, not allowing plants that always grew here in Ontario or Canada, what we call native plants, or native species of animals even, to continue to live in that place. Some species have to leave a space. So for example, starlings are a bird that we have lots of here in Ontario. They are not originally from Ontario. They're from Great Britain. But they were brought here to North America in the 1800s and released. And now there are millions of them. They tend to take over the natural spaces, the natural habitats of other of our native birds. Invasive species have such a powerful impact on the biodiversity of natural habitats because of how they interact with the native species there. Consider that. Think about those interactions and how one thing that is introduced into a, a habitat can have a great impact on it. Let's go take a look at some of the invasive species that we know are here at the Finlayson Field Center and in the surrounding community. Here's a sign of an alien, an invasive species, everyone. This is the egg case of an insect called a gypsy moth. You may have heard of these before. They lay their eggs in large egg masses like this in the winter time on trees, um, they'll uh, lay them on logs, they'll lay them even on, on houses and buildings. And when they hatch, the caterpillars will find a tree, climb up that tree, and eat the leaves. There can be literally millions of these caterpillars on the trees in a forest in the spring and summer. This is an ash tree. You can tell that by its bark. You see there, it almost looks like there's diamond shapes in the bark. That's how we know an ash tree. You'll notice that this tree has a green ribbon on it. That's because we have marked it as a dangerous tree. This is a tree that has died. And unfortunately, it did not die of old age. It died because of an insect that was not always here in Canada. It's called an emerald ash borer. And this beetle, which came from across the ocean, drills holes into the bark of the trees and that causes the trees to die. We're losing many of the ash trees in our forest and our forests across Ontario because of this invasive species. I'm sitting at the bridge at Shaw's Creek. Rivers and streams can also be places where invasive species are found. They can be plants or they can be animals. There are invasive species of fish, um, snails even. Some of you maybe have heard of zebra mussels. These species can all impact the natural ecosystem and the biodiversity that is found within that habitat. This is Phragmites, this giant of a plant that likes its feet wet, so it likes to grow in ditches and wetland areas, is another one that has come here from far across the ocean. 
it does very well in the habitats here in Ontario. But like most of these aliens and invaders, it takes over a space. Nothing else is able to grow under the Phragmites. They even put something toxic into the soil that doesn't hurt people, but hurts the other plants trying to grow around it. This is a shrub called buckthorn. Well, you see, it looks like a tree. Buckthorn is an invasive species. Buckthorn has thorns on the tip of its branches. You see that thorn there? They're small, but they're pinchy. They hurt if you touch them. They also have berries that grow on them. You can see these dark berries. Buckthorn is very invasive. It can take over large areas and crowd out the plants that would usually live within that space. At this time of year, we can see evidence of the invaders, invasive species, even though they have now gone dormant. You see these things that I'm looking at here? You can see them here all around this space. This is the seeds of garlic mustard. If I open the seed pods of the garlic mustard, there you go, you can see their little seeds. That's just from one seed pod. One of these, one, one of those. Could you imagine how many this whole plant has? They are now all on the ground and they are just waiting to germinate next spring. If I look on the ground, underneath where these seed pods are, where this year's plants were growing, well, look what I find. You see these little green leaves? They're sort of heart-shaped, these. Those are the leaves of garlic mustard. Next year, these leaves will turn into one of these plants that grow seeds, and there will be thousands and thousands of more here. This is periwinkle. Periwinkle is a plant that grows on the ground and actually grows a pretty purple flower. The problem is that it is a very aggressive ground cover. It grows quickly and it spreads thickly and does not allow light to get to the ground to allow other plants to grow. You will sometimes see periwinkle growing in a forest or at the edge of a meadow. This tells you that long ago, someone had a home there in that spot and planted periwinkle in their flower garden. Invasive species are here to stay. We know that, but that doesn't mean that there aren't things that we can do to help make it better. I would like you to do some research as citizen scientists, as citizens of the earth, and try to come up with a plan, ideas of what you can do to help habitats. I look forward to hearing your ideas. And remember, every one of us can do something to help the habitats and help our planet. Talk to you again soon. Bye.